you can all see, this is a slide presentation on Sri Harinam Chintamani. And specifically, it will be focusing on uh, inattentive chanting. Uh, we, did, we heard a wonderful presentation by uh, Janaki Nath Prabhu about some of the ways that we can become inattentive. And I think we listed at least, I don't know, 20. And we didn't even exhaust all those possibilities. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur takes Srila Haridas Thakur's writings and actually a discussion between Srila Haridas Thakur and uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he uh, presents them in this book, Sri Harinam Chintamani. Chintamani means the jewel, the crest jewel, the best, that which can fulfill all of desires once perfectly and completely. What is that Krishna's name? Krishna's only name. The perfection of existence is to chant the holy name. The success of everything we do centers around Krishna's holy name. And the goal of life is to chant Krishna's holy name. <laughs> this is Lord Chaitanya's gift to the world, a very supreme gift. But because it's Krishna, and because it's none different than Krishna, although it's easily available, it's not so easily approachable. <laughs> easily available, but not easily approachable. And therefore, it requires a mood, a mindset, and a type of determination that is unbroken in order to taste and to achieve the mercy of the Holy Name. So before we again, I'll offer prayers to our spiritual master, the Ma'om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamani Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauramani Pacharine Nirvishesha Shunyavari Pastyatya Satarine Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, can everyone see the screen? Blas, can you see the screen? From, oh, okay, okay. So, so there's the... particular. It's called touchstone. So Chintamani also means touchstone. Now there is, a, there is a, it actually exists. It's not something fictitious that sometimes people think a touchstone is fictitious. It actually is a real piece of paraphernalia in the, it exists in the spiritual world, but sometimes it comes to the material world also. An actual stone that's a touchstone. Actually, Srila Sanatana Goswami had a touchstone. We know that story. And so a touchstone means when you touch it, <laughs> it fulfills all your desires. <laughs> Sometimes in the material world, the touchstone has become a gold stone. If you touch it, it turns whatever you touch to it and becomes gold. But in the spiritual world, Shintamani touchstone means it fulfills all your desires perfectly and completely. And one of the desires of a devotee is somehow how to make Krishna happy. <laughs> Krishna is always happy, but because everything about Krishna is unlimited, and his happiness is also unlimited, so there's no limit to Krishna's happiness. So we're always trying to connect ourselves with Krishna by making Krishna happy. <laughs> Okay, so 
Let me see if I can remember how to work this thing. Okay. Is it working? Let's see. Mm -hmm. Do they put the batteries in? Yeah. Okay. Doesn't seem to be working. On the top one? That's the laser. But then this one. This moves the slides. Computer? Okay. No go. <laughs> it doesn't work from here. So maybe you can do it and I'll just say next slide and you can just do it. Okay, go to the next slide. Okay, here's the first uh, slide. And this is a introduction to the, glor the glories of Sri Harinam Chintamani. So, a unique feature of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, he made his devotees excel in different devotional service and became his mouthpiece for broadcasting that to the world. By inquiring about a few points on chanting of, of Sri Hari, from Sri Hari Das, Srila Haridas, the Lord preached the principles of the Holy Name. These, dis these subjects have been described in Chaitanya Charitamrita and in Chaitanya Bhagavad. Okay, now this is uh, Sri Harinam Chintamani. This is one version. And it's divided into uh, 15 chapters. And you can see the breakdown. <laughs> Okay, what we'll do in order to uh, go back to that slide, we're going to ask devotees to read. Is that okay? And then I'll ask each one of you to read each slide, and then if I don't, then I'll just explain this slide. That way we'll have a little bit more active participation. <laughs> go back. <laughs> so somebody read the first three. Nice and loud with all your enthusiasm. Make like... Okay, four chapters four through thirteen. The ten offenses against pure chanting. And chapters fourteen and fifteen are twenty-two offenses to be avoided in the execution of pure devotional service. The process of practicing pure devotional service to work the goal of attaining centralization is prema. So here everything is there, the glories of the holy name, accepting the holy name. Uh, avoiding impersonalist mystic conception. Yesterday we gave a class on the, the 10 offenses. Um, the 32 offenses that are mentioned in Nectar of Devotion that must be avoided in order to pr proceed nicely in our chanting and in our practice. And the actual science of bhakti in a very concise form going up to prema. Okay, next slide. Bhakti Vinoda Kaur, so we'll go a little bit into his life and his contribution. Someone read? His writings have made the sacred teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu fully available to every modern reader in a form which carries irresistible conviction and devotion. For this reason, Works of Bhakti Vinoda require to be translated into all languages of the world. The Thakur has written in a comparative manner so as to bring the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu into relationship with almost every school of thought prevalent in the world. And his writings give us the full revelation of spirit and divinity to the fullest measure that is possible to be possible to be conveyed by the instrument of human speech. Wow, what a glorification, amazing. But it doesn't it's not a it's not something that is an understatement. I mean an overstatement. It is Bhakti Vinoda of course amazing qualities. And Srila Prabhupada said um, we should read the, the works of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, especially Jaiva Dharma 
Hari Nam Chintanami and Chaitanya Char Ch Chaitanya Shikshamrita. Those three works, Prabhupada said, we should read and study them very carefully, especially Jaiva Dharma. Next slide. What he does? Okay, well, here we go. The books he's done: Jaiva Dharma, Sri Chaitanya Shikshamrita, Bhajana Rahasya, the science of of bhakti that is based on the Shikshastakam prayers, Sri Navadvip, Dharma Mahatmya, Saranagardi songs, Gita Vali, more songs, Amrita Prabha Basya, a commentary on the Shaitanya Chari, and Bhakti Loka, which is a commentary on Nectar of Instructions. So if you want to learn deeper Nectar of Instructions or Nectar Chaitanya Chari, Tamrita Bhakti Vinod, Darkur has provided those works for us. Okay, next. This is his daily schedule. He used to rest from 8 to 10, two hours, then write for six hours, more rest, chant japa, correspondence, study, bathing, court duties. He was a magistrate, stayed at home, gave his family a little bit of time. <laughs> Nor <laughs> More, more, more court duties, <laughs> and return. <laughs> he was a dutiful household. He had ten children. <laughs> Some people say thirteen. Um, returned home and translated Sanskrit to to Bengali. Then took evening bath and meal. Don't ever try to follow this. <laughs> you won't do it. <laughs> this is his uh, daily schedule. Okay. His achievements opened many branches of Harinam, Hamnata, all over the world, established over 500 Namhata Sanghas, and wrote uh, Godruma Kalpa TV, and describes the structure of Namhat. And uh, His Holiness Jai Pataka Maharaj has written a beautiful book expanding on this whole idea of Namhat. Uh, based on, it's actually he calls the tree Godruma Kalpatavi, and it's an explanation on the work of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Okay, so continue. Why was this written? Okay, so we want to know why the Shastra came. Somebody read. Okay. showing kindness to the mind by giving knowledge. And? showing kindness to the soul, the best day of compassion all. Okay. So, kindness is in three categories. To the living entity's body, to his mind, gross body, subtle body, and also the best of all, doya. Compassion is to show kindness to the living entity who is the dwelling within the body and mind. Like that compassion. Next one. Srila Haridas Thakur. This is his works. Bhakti Vinod Thakur is present it. I can't see that, so someone read. He chanted how many rounds a day? 192, 192 rounds every day. 333,333 ,333 names of God. That was his daily vow. He chanted 100,000 names loudly. 100,000 names softly. 100,000 names silently. So this was his regular vow. Born in a Muslim family, he was within a society of both Hindus and Muslims. Muslims were in the rule, the Hindus were in a lower section. Because he was a, he was a Muslim practicing Hindu Dharma, 
uh, he was discriminated against and also uh, tortured. Okay, a little bit more. Good to the next slide. When Lord Chaitanya settled in Jagannath Puri, he arranged a permanent place of residence uh, and bhajan for Srila Haridas near the famous Sita Paku tree. Hmm. How many of you been there? Hare Krishna, Jai Ho. Yeah, the Sita Paku tree. And that Paku tree is very interesting because Lord Chaitanya used to get every day this toothbrush of Lord Jagannath, which is a little neem twig. And then that was the remnants of Jagannath. So one day he took that neem twig, pushed it in the ground, and this tree came. Jai Panchitattva Ki Jai. So, okay, next slide. About the holy name. Okay, this is the subject matter. So there are principal names and secondary names. Now we should understand this, that we chant the principal names. And principal names are described as, someone read? Mm -hmm. Excellences, and these are some of the names. Radhanata Hari Yashamati, sorry, the Pramandananda, Madana Mohana, Shyama Sundara, Madhava Gopinata, Raja Gopala, Rakshala, Rakshala, Yadava, etc. And what is the result? Anyone who chants the names, the name can attain the Lord's supreme abode. Okay, these are the principles, names that describe his qualities, his pastimes, and his relationships with his pure devotees. Okay, so we have the secondary names are? Uh, describe the Lord's um, aff aff affiliation with the material energy. So he's creator, super soul, the Brahman, maintainer, and annihilator of the world, uh, Yagya, Swara, and Hara. Mm. In, invoked by the, those uh, pursuing the furtive activity and uh, empirical knowledge and resued to results. Yeah. results uh, Pretty and I'm sorry, I cannot see properly. That's why I was not reading. <laughs> Piety and salvation, but not Krishna Prem. Okay, so we don't chant the principal names, although we can. When we can sometimes indicate the Lord through these names. Okay. Next, the word Krishna, coming from the Mahabharat, Yoga, Idyoda, Parva. Krishbu vachanan sabda nacha nirviti vacharaha tayor aikyam param brahma krishna itya bibindiyate. Okay, the word krish is the attractive feature of the Lord's existence and na means spiritual pleasure. When the verb krish is added to the affix na, it becomes krishna, which is the absolute truth. So there's the origin in Shastra. At least there's the reference in Chester. The name has no origin. <laughs> it's just a reference to give us some understanding. So that's from the uh, Mahabharat. <laughs> Next, the word Rama. Ramati yoginam nante satyanande chiranami iti rama pada na so param brahma bhittiyate. The supreme absolute truth is called Rama because the transcendental pleasure takes place in the unlimited true pleasure of spiritual existence. So everyone wants pleasure, 
But real pleasure is found on the spiritual world, in the spiritual world, and it is embodied in the name Rama. So sometimes we say Bala Rama. He takes great pleasure in using strength, like that. Okay, the origin of, and the word Hare, Hare. The vocative form of addressing, that means calling. It's Hari, Krishna, and Hare is Radharani. So, so Hare is actually Srimati Radharani. Okay. We all know that. Okay, next. This is a beautiful verse from Ananta. Among the ways of executing devotional service, the nine prescribed methods are the best. For these processes have great potency to deliver Krishna and the ecstatic love for him. Now, out of the nine processes of the devotion, the most important is to chant the holy name of the Lord. If one does so, avoiding the ten offenses, one can easily obtain valuable love of God. So although there are nine, there are nine angas, and each of the angas are a, bha, a anga of bhakti, but in this age, the, the anga, or the principle of chanting the holy name, must be accompany, the other nine must accompany in the, this particular anga. If it doesn't, then one will not get the benefit of the other angas. <laughs> Full benefit. Okay, so the holy name is there. Somebody read this one. It is no less powerful than Krishna himself. Since Krishna's name is not contaminated by the material qualities, there is no question of being involved with Maya. Krishna's name is always liberated and spiritual. It is never conditioned by the laws of material nature. This is because Krishna, the name of Krishna and Krishna himself are identical. This is a very powerful and foundational verse that describes the essence of Krishna's name never touches the material world, completely transcendental, it is pure, it is non-different, it is liberated, it is Krishna himself, it is never anything but Krishna himself. So, this is a very... Okay, next person get ready to read, whoever you are. Brihad Vishnu Sahasra Nama Stotra from Padma Puran, Rama Rameti Rameti, Rame 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 Manorame Sahasra Nama Bhistulyam Rama Nama Varanane Lord Shiva addressed his wife Durga O Varanana I chant the holy name of Ram 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 and thus enjoy this beautiful sound this holy name of Ramachandra is equal to 1000 holy names of Lord Vishnu next slide okay Next, Suhasa Nama Puryanam Tri Avritya Tu Yat Falam Ek Avritya Tu Krishnaya Nama Kam Tad Payachchati Next, read. The pious results derived from the chanting the thousand holy names of Vishnu three times can be attained by only one utterance of the holy name of Krishna. Uh -huh. So three th a thousand names of Vishnu in spiritual potency equals one name of Krishna. <laughs> Next slide. Inattentive chanting. Okay, so here we go. The rest was just an introduction. This is the class. <laughs> okay. ha, is there anybody that has that problem? <laughs> no, nobody does. Anyway, we'll just go through it just for revision. Just Nobody has that problem. Okay. From, this is from Harinam Chintami. Someone read. One may carefully avoid all other nama paradas, yet still not experience the ecstasy of the pure name. Why? 
Next verse. It is also an offense to be inattentive while chanting, the eleventh offense. The eleventh or the additional offense. Next one. Negligent chanting sows the seeds of anathas, which soon fructify. Okay, so there are devotees that I know of and we, who have been chanting for 10, 20 years and are still chanting inattentively. And they can't really make any progress. Why? Because of that inattentive chanting. And it says here, it plants seeds that bring about greater blockages in our spiritual life, or anarthas. Anartha means, artha means that which is wanted, that which is auspicious, that which is is desirable. Anartha means inauspicious, undesirable, must be avoided. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur describes the 11th offense. If you avoid the 11th offense, you will avoid tendency to avoid the other ten offenses becomes manifest. If you don't, then the other ten offenses can easily be offended, and the other ten principles can easily become, uh, you, in other words, you will commit other offenses. So this is, that's why Bhakti Vinod Thakur said, we must put our attention here if we really want to make progress in spiritual life. Sometimes we think, what should I do? Should I just eat less, sleep less? Should I just be nicer to everybody more? <laughs> what should I do to make progress? These things are nice. You know, should I pay my obeisances longer? <laughs> what should I do? Should I make sure my tea lock is nicer? Make sure my dhoti is in the right position? <laughs> what should I do to make progress in spiritual life? Here you go. Attentive chanting. This is foundational to all our success in spiritual life. Okay, next. Inattentiveness and negligence are synonymous. Why is negligent chanting the root cause of other offenses? Why? Okay, so go on. Here, there's a little image here. Get the picture? A friend, a friend you haven't seen for a long time invites you over to their house so you can catch up. You excitedly rush over only to find yourself completely ignored while they do something less important. List some emotions you would be experiencing. Okay, that's an exercise. Put yourself in a similar situation. What, how would you feel? You invited someone to be with, and then they want to do something else, and so. Disappointed. Disappointed. Good. Happy. Huh? Very happy. Happy. Okay. <laughs> maybe, hopefully, happy that maybe it'll change. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Frustrated. Frustrated. Hurt. Hurt. Something else? Angry. Angry? Uh, unwanted. You feel unwanted. Yeah, these are all these are all negative feelings that come when something apparently was going to be nice but became became something not nice or other, opposite. So there is some hope of some pleasure, some exchange, and the opposite comes. And so these are some of the feelings. Okay, so you have to understand this is this 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 is the idea of inattentive chanting. You're calling Krishna, and then you ignore him. <laughs> okay, next. Okay. Consequences of inattentive chanting. Someone read? People are naturally attached to material things. Their memories are absorbed in matter form. On the one hand, someone chants the holy name, but his mind and attention are far away from his chanting. Even if he chants one lakh, mm -hmm. 100,000 holy names of, on his mala, not a drop of taste for the Lord's name is produced in his heart. 
This is a vivid example of inattentive chanting and its result. It is difficult to restrain the heart of a materialist from such offenses. Okay. You got the picture? So much chanting, so much endeavor, not a drop of taste. Next. Mm -hmm. T, okay, now we're going into the different types of inattention. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur, being a spiritual scientist, has carefully and analyzed inattention and divided it into three aspects. And they are called, read the Sanskrit also. Okay, so all forms of inattention fall into one of these three categories, or all three. So, aldoxina, apathy. That means no enthusiasm, lackadaisical. Another word is used as lackadaisical. Routine, mechanical, just trying to get it done. Really, not really trying to meet Krishna in the holy name, not trying to purify the heart, not trying to please Krishna. Jadya, lazy, inertia, sometimes it's mentioned sleep. Um, it's similar to aldoxina, but jadya means more or less, you know, one is just sleepy. <laughs> and they can't stay awake. They somehow, you've seen that in our temples, you know. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. Why did you do that? You're sleeping. No, I'm not. <laughs> anyway, it's just like, yeah. We even deny it. <laughs> okay, so, big shaper, distraction. Everyone knows what that is. Thinking about other things. But it doesn't really say thinking about... Uh, Krishna consciousness in a different way. It says thinking about material things. You have to go shopping. The husband forgot to give you the money for the groceries. <laughs> you know, all kinds of material things, whatever, planning or lamenting about what happened in the past, problem solving. We talked about that last night trying to solve somebody some problems while you're chanting because problems do arise right we understand that sometimes the problem is not there until you start chanting and what happens the mind starts to dwell on those things that it's kind of harboring on the unconscious and then the unconscious it brings it to the conscious level because of the chanting and then we try to solve these problems. And what we do is go back and forth, debating with our mind, arguing with our mind, coming up with solutions, canceling those solutions, <laughs> going into another solution, and at the end saying, oh, forget it. Because <laughs> you can't solve it in your mind. <laughs> That's, you have to remember, you cannot solve your problems in your mind. You can write it down if you feel like there's something important to be remembered later. Go back to it later. You can do that, but then, but don't make that a, pro, a program for your japa to solve your problems. Okay, so vikshape is distraction. And then we also have getting us distracted by the external environment. Chanting, sitting with a focused attention, keeping the eyes half open or alternating open and closed eyes was, is the rec recommended means for positioning yourself, keeping the back straight. But sometimes the devotee wants to walk around, feels in the seat, the need to chant, 
by walking, that is okay. Sometimes sleepiness is overcome by walking. We do that. But what happens? The tendency to look around or get distracted by the external environment comes. So one of the things I would highly recommend, maybe it's something that's unavoidable for some of you, is don't chant in the place where you do your day-to-day -day activities because you're starting to see the paraphernalia that reminds you of what you have to do throughout the day and then the mind starts dwelling on these and gets distracted. There is no alternative for chanting. Chanting means full concentration. You can't do other things and expect to get benefit. Kind of chanting means you can walk around, but we recommend, and this is highly recommended, you look at the floor when you're walking. There's nothing to see down there, <laughs> generally. <laughs> Okay, next one. Symptoms of unattentive chanting. Okay, so these are the symptoms of each of the categories. Someone can read. For aldoxina apathy. On the one hand, someone chants the holy name, but his mind and attention are far away from his chanting. Okay, Jadia. He begins by chanting and remembering the holy name, but very soon feels it unendurable and wants to sleep. Hmm. One is dis distracted with other things all around him. Hmm. Okay. So there's the symptoms of this unattentive chanting. Any questions about that? Yes. Uh, is it all right to keep one's eyes closed and see, you know, the form of the Lord or or uh, think of Srila Prabhupada and remember his murti form because most of the times I tend to keep my eyes closed when chanting. Um, when you keep your eyes closed, the thoughts of the mind speed up. <laughs> when you keep your eyes open, they slow down because generally that's true. So if you can focus your concentration on something, the form of the Lord, then that's nice. But Srila Prabhupada makes a statement in the Bhagavatam where he says that when you're clearly chanting the holy name, the Lord's form will automatically appear without separate endeavor. So he makes that point that when you're chanting nicely, the form will appear. But if you try to surreptitiously or super implant the form of the Lord in your mind, you may hold it for a little while, but it'll go in and out. When the Lord actually comes automatically, then you can absorb yourself. He comes automatically when the chanting is clear and nice. I'm I sure we had that. And, we have, and devotees have that experience when you're chanting, all of a sudden, the tra a transcendental form will enter into your consciousness. Yeah, it happens. Yes? No? No? That's the only... <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> no, I do believe you, but it's it does happen. When you're chanting clearly and continuously. Clear chanting. Clear means you're pronouncing the words clearly. But on the other hand, I find when I open my eyes, I'm more distracted by what's around me. Yeah. If you can do that without losing that connection, yeah. But as soon as you lose your connection, another thought's going to come in the mind. <laughs> okay. Usually it comes naturally when you're clear chanting. If you try to surreptitiously do it, you may get some success, but you'll be in and out. And then after a while, you usually give it up. <laughs> Any comment on that one? Does it all the time? No. It depends on the person, on, on their level of practice, and on, on their level of spiritual advancement, like that. Anything else about... Yes, Babesh Prabhu? Apathy. On apathy, it's explained that the mind is far away from the chanting, 
and I was wondering how that is different to distraction because there the mind is also thinking about other things. Um, distraction seems to be, you know, focusing on something material. Here is just a wandering mind. That's what it seems like. That's the way I can un uh, interpret that. Yes, Vishnu Priya, what would you say about that? You wanted to say something? Okay. Someone? Some interpretation? I tried to change maybe a circle or two per day, eh? but Prabhupada said 16 circles. But any time I chant, I find myself in this situation. Well, you just keep chanting. <laughs> It'll get better. <laughs> it's like practicing. Are you, are you uh, do you do sports? Bicycle riding? Climbing, swimming, yes. Swimming, yeah. Did you become expert at the beginning? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but because you want to do it, you become expert, yeah. So in the same way, we have to practice. Practice, practice. And follow the principles. It seems like it's just a roving mind going from one thing to another. In other words, because there's a lack of enthusiasm, the mind is just drifting everywhere and anywhere. Sometimes there's nothing in the mind. It's just, it's just roving, going from place to place. Here, it's more like focusing on something that is of an, a nature of something material. And in, in Haridam Chintamani, Haridas Thakur says, thinking about money, thinking about uh, the opposite sex. In other words, the more powerful forms of, of material enjoyment like that. Thinking about success in one's life, you know. This is what he describes it. He gives examples like that. Yes. Um, the the stage of uh, nishta or ruchi, which stage would go with uh, attentive chanting? Attentive chanting can usually has to get rid of thirty. I'm sorry, seventy five percent of the anarthas have to be free before we can one can move to the stage of an nishta. As long as the anarthas is there, it's very difficult and practically impossible to maintain attentive chanting. So on the platform of nishta, it can develop. On the platform of ruchi, it develops nicely. <laughs> and then you're chanting. But when it comes to akshak, ashakti, then it's swarasika. Swarasika means spontaneously chanting. It's no, there's no really excess endeavor. The name is just flowing like that. There's mantra trala and swarasika. One is yet you're trying to chant the mantra. The other one is the mantra is just flowing nicely. <coughs> so on nishta, it starts to begin a chanting like that. Okay. He, uh, Tikashura, you wanted to say something? Um, I was thinking about the difference between apathy and distraction. Yeah. And the difference between the apathy and distraction. Yeah. Okay, so I was thinking about the difference between apathy and distraction. And to me, it seems that it has to do with enthusiasm and faith. If we are enthusiastic and have faith in the holy name, we can still chant uh, being distracted. Yes. But no. with apathy, we think, okay, maybe it works. I'm not sure uh, what to do. I have to... Nice, nice point. Very nice point. Yes. Because of a lack of enthusiasm and maybe even a lack of faith, a lack of faith also, one is falls into the category of apathy like that. Okay. Anyone from the men's side? 
Okay, yes. Uh, These three con connected to the three gunas? And there's no reference anywhere like that. But you can might say that sleep is more or less <laughs> is ignorance. Aldoxina is... I don't see any goodness in there. <laughs> Maybe just passion and ignorance mixed in. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> any other, any more questions? Y y yes, Nuria. Yeah, give her the microphone. Her voice is very soft. Uh, Hare Krishna. We'd like to ask about uh, you know when when you are sleeping when you sleep. Mm -hmm. in the night, during the night, and then suddenly you wake up and you discover yourself chanting, but you are not uh, aware. Uh, 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 you know, we, we pray for that. <laughs> uh, I, know, I don't know. Uh, is it that's, comes from uh, an attentiveness? Oh, or? No, no, that's, that's just spontaneous attraction to the Holy Name manifests, even in a subtle... Uh, Subtle existence of sleep like that. Uh, okay. He shouldn't con that, that doesn't fall into any offense. <laughs> That's nice. We want to come to the point of actually chanting 24 hours a day, so that is available. I think. So chanting 24 hours a day means there are times where you are sleeping. So if it car if the sleep if it carries on in your sleep, that means the heart is connected to Krishna through the holy name. Or the mind is connected to Krishna through the holy name. Nicely. Yeah, that's, we want that. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. You go to a kirtan program, you go to a 12-hour kirtan, and then you're just buzzing high, and, you, and then you take rest that night, and then you're chanting when you're going to sleep, when you wake up, that same melody that you like the best was still going on. And then, you, and then you're going to get, do your morning duties, it's still going on. And then your wife says, hey, why didn't you take out the garbage? And then you say, oh no, what happened to the holy name? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, anyway. In other words, there's some distraction that comes up. So, yeah, but it happens. It is naturally, what we say, a principle to internalize the quality of our chanting where it resonates. There's a story where Srila Prabhupada was asked, are you always chanting Hare Krishna? Because Prabhupada did so many other things. And he said to one, the devotee who asked him, he said, come and put your ear on my back. And the devotee did that, and he could hear the sound of the holy name going on inside of Prabhupada. Yeah. And I have experienced that with other great devotees, where you can feel their whole body resonating, resonating the holy name. So, you know, when we become a little bit purified, then the holy name becomes more and more a part of us and then becomes our constant companion. Like that. You don't even have to audibly chant it, it just manifests itself. And Prabhupada said, actually, you know, for a pure devotee, the holy name is always there. Doesn't even have to think about chanting, it's always with him. So yeah. Uh, Janaki Nath Prabhu, yes. Janaki Nath gave a beautiful class last night. Did you like the class? Well, yes. Yeah, it was really quite, quite edifying. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, I wanted to ask you, um, you mentioned the root cause of other offenses is negligence or inattentive chanting, mm -hmm. which sows the seeds of anartha, which right. will soon fructify. Right. And then, and then you mentioned that only when 75% of anartha is removed, then you come to the stage of nishta. That's Bhaktivinoda Thakur has written that in Bhajana Rahasya. 
And that's where attentive chanting happens. That's where it can manifest. So Marge, it seems but if you if you're still committing offenses, then it won't manifest. Because that 75% is the three categories of narcissists that accept offenses. Offenses always ca carry up all the way to the category of prema. One can commit offenses even on prema. Uh -huh. So, so uh -huh. if there's offenses committed, then the holy name will not, will not manifest. So, Maharaj, it seems like to get to Nishta is it, impossible because as long as we have anarthas, inattentive chanting will always be there, which will plant more seeds of anarthas, and it's a bit of a vicious well, cycle. Anartha nivritti is the fourth stage. Right. That's where you. That's where we're practicing. Once, once we take initiation from the spiritual master and work under his guidance, we become diligently. And we become diligent in following the instructions and start to understand how to apply the instructions to overcome the blockages in our Krishna consciousness. So that's part of our parabdha karma, which manifests day to day. So then we, as we manifest it, that's being manifested, and we work on that. And then when you get through 75%, when you destroy 75% of your anarthas, you move solidly to nishta. You're fixed on, the, on that platform. So most of us, I don't want to sound critical, but most of us are struggling with anartha nivritti. It's the big platform, <laughs> like that. But once you get the nishta, nishta means you can still fall down, but you won't give up devotional service. And in the Nartha stage, you, will, you can also give up Krishna consciousness because of the tendency to, com, to be un, unable to remove the anarthas. Or what we say, attached to material desires and still doesn't want to give up these material desires, or cannot give them up because of lack of, of accepting the mercy of the Lord. Sure. So these things are there. So yeah, you can come to attentive chanting on Nishta platform, but you could also lose it if you commit offenses. <laughs> so so an Anartas Maharaj, you, you're going to be doing inattentive chanting, but working under the guidance of the spiritual master, uh, even though you're doing inattentive chanting, but through his guidance, you can reach the stage of nishta. Yeah, yeah. That's what he's there for, to guide you from step to step. There's symptoms of each of the steps, and you can, by observe, knowing the symptoms and observing them symptoms in yourself, you can see what platform of practice you're on. Thank you. Okay. It takes a little introspective. You have to be introspective. And Krishna consciousness means to be self-introspective. Not looking so much on the outside about what's going on out there and blaming that for your problems. <laughs> Our problems are all internal. And once we purify that, then it manifests itself externally. <laughs> like that. So, there was another hand over here. Yes. Rada I was wondering what, uh, what categories uh, when we are uh, thinking of our service uh, we should consider and what uh, what should we think about when we are service? When we're thinking of our service? The Acharyas basically say that if you're thinking of your service and you're chanting, it's not considered distraction, but better to think of the holy name because that's what you're doing if you're chanting. But if you're thinking of your service automatically, that is allowable. But if you're consciously thinking of your service and honor, then that would be a distraction. It happens sometimes. You're concerned about how to organize your service or what you need to do. So your mind goes to that because that desire is there. Because the desire is there, it pulls the mind to that, uh, to that thought. That's okay. Bring it back. It's not an offense. It's not considered distraction, but it is not the essence of the, the process of meditation. Meditation means to absorb yourself in the sound vibration.
enthusiastic enough about the chanting, about the holy name? Uh, is it because, uh, the, uh, because that, uh, that the mind goes... It could be, yeah. It could be. Because of lack of enthusiasm, or not full enthusiasm, the mind will go. The mind is powerful. The mind represents Krishna. The senses represent the demigods. So the mind is very powerful. <laughs> and it can drag you away even in, even against your own will. That's mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna, Arjuna says, you're asking me to control the mind, but I think it's like controlling the wind. And Krishna says, you're right, but you can do it by practice. <laughs> By practice, and he also gives the second principle, giving up uh, sense gratification. Because <laughs> if you don't give up sense gratification and you practice Krishna consciousness simultaneously, you're just building a fire and throwing water on it at the same time. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> you can't really build your fire if you keep it every once in a while want to cool it down. Some people say that I'm afraid of going. I don't. I don't want to make too much advancement because my material life will be finished. <laughs> uh, you know, Krishna. Here's my list. You check it out. These are the things I don't want, and these are the things you shouldn't mess around with, because these are the ones I'm going to keep. <laughs> so don't don't take those away, please. <laughs> Krishna says, uh, I think this one is for Vishnu. I'll give it to Vishnu. Vishnu says, I'll give it to Indra. <laughs> so, in other words, you can't bargain with the idea that I'm going to make so much advancement, but not more than that. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, pass the ba microphone to Adar Adarya Chandrika. Thank you. You have to chant purely before it works. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hare Krishna. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, t uh, to chant attentively, Prabhupada said, like simple, just chant like a um, a child cries. From right. her mother, uh, sincerely. That's that's the mean. That's the mood of chanting. Yes, um, that means that if I will chant like this, it it is like a helpless mood. My mood will be like helpless. But how to be in that mood when I see on the other hand Krishna helps me so much in my life? How to feel myself helpless if He's I know? He's helping you because you're helpless. As soon as you give up your helplessness, he stops helping you. <laughs> But I cannot stay in that mood to be helpless. You have to do something. You take his mercy and be successful in your execution of activities within devotional service, within your life. But you should always remember, behind your, your, your enthusiasm, your endeavor, your ability is Krishna's mercy. If you forget that, then you, after some time, not right away, Krishna will withdraw that mercy. So you always have to check in and remember that you're. The thing is, we are helpless because even if we don't, even if we're having some apparent success in life, <coughs> material energy is right there. Any time, anything can be finished. <laughs> you know, just you know, death can come at any second. <laughs> Calamities can come at any moment. Prabhupada says, we're walking through this this park here in Denver, Colorado. Very nice park. He was with his devotees, morning walk. Looks very nice. He said, at any minute, it can be a blazing fire and all destroyed. But your world doesn't give you any warning sometimes. So that way, with that understanding that you're always in a position of need, then you can always be in a position of helplessness. So it's 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 a it's a it's a mindset. The mood may come and go according to, you know, how much you're practicing that mindset. But if you understand that that's important, then at at different times you'll be in that mindset. Krishna saved me. Krishna, 
I have to do this project. Without your mercy, how can I become successful? I want to get this job. How can I, you know? In other words, always dependent on Krishna in every situation. That's what it means to be helpless. It doesn't mean not to act. Arjuna had a fight, but Krishna says, fight for the sake of fighting, not considered happiness and distress, loss or gain, victory, defeat. But fight for me. I mean, fighting means you really have to wax anger and be really up front. But in the background, Arjuna knew it's Krishna. <laughs> you have to keep that in your mind or in your heart, somewhere in your life. This is quite advanced level. All right. I'll give you a, a sutra. If you can remember this, you have to act like it depends on you and you have to know it doesn't. If you can practice that, it's clear. You have to act like it depends on you, but you have to know it doesn't. That's detachment. Mm -hmm. That's detachment. Okay, next, next slide. Examples of inattentive chanting. Okay, here you go. Okay, somebody read. Driving japa, newspaper japa, sightseeing japa, radar japa, prajalpa japa, machine gun japa, cell phone japa, sleeping japa. Read, that one, read this one again. <laughs> cell phone japa. Again. Cell phone japa. One more time. <laughs> cell phone japa. Okay. Sleeping japa, shopping japa, Facebook japa. <laughs> Oh yeah, this last one too. <laughs> my my red light decided to quit. <laughs> he burnt out on a cell phone Java. <laughs> I guess I committed an offense to this thing. So yeah, so these are here's our friend over there. Hare Krishna, Donald Trump, Hare Krishna. Yeah, so various types of, do we have any uh, experiences in our life of any of these? Okay, please try to avoid it. Anybody want to talk about any one of them? Machine gun japa. Ram. We got it. <laughs> Hare Krishna. That was good job, boy. I did 16 rounds in 20 minutes. <laughs> I was talking to one lady. I said, how long does you, do you take to chant japa? She said, I do my 16 rounds in 48 minutes. I said, all, every word in the mantra? <laughs> she was didn't want to argue with me. She said, this is what I do. I said, I pay my obeisances. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's not like trying to be, beat the clock like that. Sleeping japa, cell phone japa. How about cooking japa? <laughs> we didn't get, add that one in there. Ladies have that problem. Yeah. what is more, I don't know, acceptable for the mind, whatever this is, you know, driving japa, Facebook japa, it means that sincerely we don't want to chant. I mean, honestly. Yeah, it falls into the category aldakshina. Just no, no enthusiasm for chanting. Or I've been known to multitask, you know. I'm a multitasker. <laughs> so I, I add japa to whatever else I do. But Krishna is not there. He doesn't, he has to be the complete focus. And you won't get any benefit. You'll get benefit from the 
You know, when you split your japa with any of these, you don't. You generally don't get the benefit of any of it. It's like sometimes we say, if you give up the spiritual for the material, you lose both. If you give up the spiritual in order to gain in the material, you lose both because you can't keep anything material. So in the same way, when you try to split your job, you don't really get the benefit of either the activity. And then you also commit offenses. Also, when Mataji Udara Chandrika mentioned that we should chant like child crying for a mother, hmm? it yeah. also reminded me, you know, sometimes you see little children, they just want their mother. You want to distract them with other things. You offer them this, that, but no, they are crying out like crazy to get the mother. So actually we should really only want Krishna. <laughs> well, that analogy is used that only when the mother comes is the baby satisfied. Even if some other lady holds the baby still, I mean, it's not the same. Okay, yes. Yes. What is that one? Radar Japa? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. She's wearing that same sari again. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram. In other words, scanning the environment. Don't miss anything in the environment. You got it? Radar? Radar means picks up everything in the range, you know? <laughs> okay, is that, is that clear? Yeah, so that, we want to avoid that. Okay, so, yeah, yes, uh, Neela Chala. So, uh, it happens if someone else is chanting Japa and you see them, do you, do you, do you acknowledge them? Or just and someone else is committing these offenses? No, 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 like if, if they're chanting, there's always a tendency to say Hare Krishna or, but they're chanting, so should you no, just... No, no, don't, don't disturb their chanting. <laughs> You're just saying Hare Krishna, and they're already saying Hare Krishna. <laughs> so, you just want some some notification. You want to be noticed. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's not good. Uh, Sri Devi, you had something. Um, when we are uh, not counting, that means we are not um, when we are not keeping track of the number of rounds and we say you know I've chanted for two hours or three hours or whatever it is and so I think I've covered my 16 rounds maybe maybe not uh, is you, that you have to use counter beads Sankhya Purna it's mentioned that the Goswami's Sankhya what is that verse from the Goswami Astakam do you know that uh, Divya it's one of the prayers to the six Goswamis. The six Goswamis, although they were chanting incessantly, Sankhya means to count. They kept counter beads. One time, Radhana Swami told me this. He had, and this was in the early days, he had, had somehow or other lost his counter beat. So he's sitting in a lecture and Prabhupada's there and Prabhupada's talking. And Prabhupada starts to talk about japa and he says, and now when you finish the round you go like this and you pull that one bead there and then you count that like that. Then, and then Maharaj said, oh I realize Prabhupada's saying I have to get some new counter beads. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, we have to count. It's important to count. Lord Chaitanya counted. He also kept, kept counter beads. Numerical vow is required when you chant. You make a numerical vow. 16 for those who initiate as minimum. Others can make numerical vows. You keep that numerical vow, but you have to count every day. Yeah. That's why counter beads are there. And they're important, necessary. Yes, anything else? Uh, yes, uh, Silpa? I just wanted to 
finish that question, Guru Maharaj. So if someone is saying that we are chanting for so many hours, we don't have to count because we are chanting so many Don't believe them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I just don't believe it. It's not like what they say is okay. It's not. Silpa's all right behind you. Yeah. Uh, Maharaj, my question was, if we're trying to finish our japa, and um, it's a matter of time, and we do commit these offenses, is it best not to do them? Or not to do your rounds? No, it's better not to commit these. <laughs> but if you have something that is required to do, just like pujaris have to have a certain schedule, or if you have to cook for the family, or, you know, the children, or you need something. And um, you, those things cannot sometimes be put aside. You have to make time in your daily schedule, where you schedule your japa in, where there's no other activity. You have to do that. You look at your 24 hours, you carefully try to see. Preferably, it's early morning time, Usually there's not too many things to do early in the morning. So we, we re recommend, and it's also very conducive to quality japa to chant early. And Prabhupada actually said the rounds you chant before Mangalarti, the rounds you chant during the Brahma Mahurta hour have more spiritual power than they than later on in the day. Brahma Mahurta? Bhava Maharta is one and a half hours before sunrise. 248 periods. Two Mahartas make a Brahma Mahartha. 48 and 48, 96 minutes. Mm -hmm. Like that. Yes. Prabhu, yeah. Hare Krishna. So, um, some devotees are chanting extra rounds also. So, is it appropriate? to do them during class or during kirtan or something? Why would you want to do extra rounds when you're doing something else? <laughs> Better to go to the kirtan and go to the class, and if you have, want to do extra rounds, do them some other time. Extra rounds means extra, not at the same time. <laughs> right? What about, um, we can see many times uh, before Mangal Aratik, when devotees are chanting and then it's time that the curtain opens and some of them, they prolong their round into the Mangal Aratik. Don't worry so about it. If, so we can do that? Or? Don't worry about it, it's not important. <laughs> if somebody's doing that, it's, it's not our, don't worry about that. That's their problem. Okay. It's not. It's not for us to judge them or not to judge them. That's not. It's not our problem. No, I'm asking if it's appropriate thing to do. Like well, if we you, are mid you're round. Ju you're judging. You're judging whether it's appropriate or not, and you're saying you're not. You're doing something inappropriate. Don't worry about it. So, but if we, if we you are, do it, yeah, don't do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Because when the word appears, then you should pay full attention. <laughs> if somebody else does it, don't worry about yes. it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yes. Uh, while chanting with a Christian Mangalarti, we are maybe probably in a half year or something, should we uh, leave them? Uh, we could stop there or have. Stop you around there, yeah. Stop there right now. Yeah, oh. stop there. No Krishna is appearing. <laughs> oh. yeah, just stop there. Uh, just to get the point clear, um, some of those activities that are here connected with Joppa are unavoidable, like sleeping or shopping. Uh, and uh, the order is best to chant 24 hours a day. So, uh, chanting while going shopping, okay, for example, okay, the idea, outside of the Joppa idea time, is, this the is idea okay. Is this. Good question, very good question. The idea is this. Your prescribed number of rounds you have to do attentively, with all, no other activity going on. So if you're, whatever your prescribed number of rounds. 
Now, once you finish that, you go on to your day-to-day -day activities, you can still chant while you're working. But you don't carry your beads and chant. You just chant. Hate koro kaji muki bodo hori, it says. Chant, work with your hands and chant the holy name. That's Bengali. So the, they say, they recommend, and you can chant throughout the day, but those are not the rounds that you have vowed to your spiritual master. That's just because the principle is satatam kirtayantumam, always remember Krishna. So you can chant anytime, any place, anywhere. Like that. Thank you. Okay. But not your prescribed rounds. Kosul. Um, so, so why do we uh, chant to Krishna and stuff? Hmm? Why do we chant to Krishna and that? Because if we chant more Krishna, he can hear what you're saying to him back. And he's happy. Exactly. Yeah, he's very happy to hear that. So the more you chant, the more Krishna's happy. Thank you. Go on to the next slide. Uh, Ekantika, you had a question? Okay. All right, let's go. Consequences of inattentive chanting. Someone read? Uh, my, my red light is no longer working. We're going to need the microphone. Not a, drop of uh, not a drop of test for the Lord's name is produced in his heart. Even if one chants one lakh of holy names, not a drop of the taste. And what does it say? Oh. Uh, destruction in chanting produces a type of illusion causing serious offenses against the holy name that, that are very difficult to overcome. This illusion leads to a craving for wealth, woman, position, success, and even cheating when even cheating. When these attractions cover the heart, the neophyte gradually loses interest in chanting of the holy name. So this is a more of a uh, complete description of distraction. Okay. Any questions regarding that? Yes, uh, Michelle. Ah, okay. Very good question. I think that might come up as a solution. We're going to, we'll, we'll get to that. The solution is also going to be given here. Continue. How many more slides about? Okay. 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 That, we'll get to the solutions too. Someone, remedies for aldoxina. So here's some of the remedies, okay? Here, this is actually answering your question. Okay, someone read, nice and loud, Anurada. Um, Scream it out. Yeah. <laughs> Make it his daily routine to chant for an hour in the company of a saintly Vaishnava in a lonely, secluded spot. Taking note of the Vaishnava's devotional attitude and his relish for the holy name, the new fight should try to emulate this mood sit in a closed room alone and meditate on the name, as did the previous sages. If that is not possible, then one should cover the head and face with a cloth and concentrate on the holy name. Have you tried that? I have. It works. <laughs> So there's a solution. One should seek out the company of great devotees who are chanting the holy name. One should try to emulate, not imitate, emulate their mood. And uh, if that doesn't work, go in a closed room, cover your you know, senses and concentrate. Yes. Bhakti Vinod Thakur is telling you what to do. <laughs> Don't argue with him. <laughs> so, you don't want to see anything, do you? Do you want, is there something to see? No, but we just discussed that if you keep the eyes closed, uh, 
But speed it up with thoughts of Krishna. Put Krishna's image in the mind. Or really concentrate hard on chanting the holy name. This is this is this is called this is called the surgical operation. There's some remedial medicines that are given, but this is the this is the the real when the one and attention is really strong, this is what you need to do. This is more like a last resort. Yeah. Okay. Yes. What's emulation? Emulation means to... Um, uh, Nitya Kishore, what is the reading of the word emulation? She's better in English than I am. Huh? To follow the example. To emulate means to follow by example. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Follow by example. Not imitate. Imitate is I'm doing what they're doing. But uh, observe their example and try to emulate that. Or try to follow that. Something like uh, getting the core of it, not the external. Right. The external is we sometimes we imitate how a person speaks or how a person talks or walks. That's imitation. You want to emulate their qualities. You want to bring you want to have those same qualities by practicing those qualities also. Jai uh Janaki Nath Prabhu. not and just just to, just to understand that because no because you look for those persons who you know are in advance in the Sri Bhajana Rihasya no I'm sorry in Sri Bhajana Rita by Srila Narathari Sakari he explains one should know the difference between the different levels of Vaishnavas and what levels they're practicing on you have to make discrimination. Who's a neophyte? Who's who's on the middle platform? Who's on ultimate platform? Not for the sake of criticizing, but for the sake of accepting association and direction. We should know that. And try to understand that. You can understand that by symptoms. One who never finds fault with another person is at least on the Madhyam platform. Or maybe even on an Ottoman platform. <laughs> That's a high quality. One who is free from fault finding. That is that is a very high quality. When you meet a person like that, and you want that person's association. <laughs> yes. Okay. Next. Uh, go to the next one. Results of applying remedies. Someone read, please. Yeah, Ivan, you have the microphone. <laughs> step by step, his mind and attention becomes fixed in the holy name. By constant chanting, the mellow of the holy name makes him anxious to taste more of that nectar. He is attracted to be in the presence of Tulasi Devi and to reside in a place of Lord Krishna's pastimes. Always seeking the association of saintly devotees, he takes up their discipline. He follows in the footsteps of previous pure devotees in relishing the sublime joy of intimate devotional service, or bhajan. He begins with an hour of bhajan, then two, then three, then increases it to four. Finally, he chants not less than three lakhs of holy names a day. This helps him to soon sever his links with materialism. Step-by-step mm. -step process. <laughs> Because when you're actually chanting, you don't want to stop. Prabhupada said, when, when you're chanting, you'll say 16 rounds, why not 16,000 rounds? It becomes, you actually become, you can't stop chanting when you taste that on the holy name. You just, so it then, then it just gradually increases, increases, increases like that. Okay, next one. Continue. Next one. 
Here's a remedy for Jadya. Advanced devotees are cautious about this offense. They never waste a single moment in useless talks or activities, constantly meditating on the Lord's holy name. They are so absorbed in the nectar of the holy name that they do not care for anything else. One must make an effort to associate with such rare devotees and follow their example, thus ridding oneself of laziness. Hmm. So looking, searching out those persons that are of, that, of this caliber here. They never waste the time for useless talk. They're constantly meditating on the holy name. They don't care for anything else. Seek out their association. Okay, next. Okay, the results of getting proper remedies for Jadya. It is the nature of saintly Vaishnavas to be always engaged in devotional activities. They never waste time uselessly. Seeing this, one will become immediately attracted to this devotional trait. One will ask himself how he can also become like these devotees, immersed in meditation upon the Holy Name. How, from this very day, can he gradually increase his chanting until he can actually chant three lakhs of Holy Names with inspiration and eagerness? When Lord Krishna sees such enthusiasm, he reciprocates by removing the neophyte's mental inertia with the power of his name and by bringing him into the association of advanced devotees. Mm -hmm. Here's the process, okay. Now, one may be doing other services, but still, the holy name is there. <laughs> okay, any questions about this one? We're going a little bit faster now because we're getting on in time here. So. Okay, next. Remedies for distraction. This is, all this information is available to anyone who wants it. So if anybody wants this slide presentation, just see, uh, Let's see, can we say Johnny Kinath? Yeah. Give him your email, and then we'll make sure you get this. I'll give you the whole thing, which is 135 slides. We, this is an abbreviated version. Okay. Yes, okay. Make a constant effort to drive material cravings away from the mind and diligently follow the rules of Vaishnava etiquette. Begin by observing Ikadashi vows appearance, days of the Lord, and other important festival days. Spend the entire festival day and night chanting and singing the glories of the Lord in association of saintly devotees. Observe festival, festivals by being in one of the dharmas with pure devotees in the line of Srila Rupa Goswami, reading and discussing sastra, wholeheartedly participate in these festivals without anxiety or hesitation. Here, yeah, it's interesting. This is a concentrated form of getting rid of this distraction by attending festivals and doing a absorption into transcendental activities that is complete, such as festivals, kirtan, melas, just like, I don't know, next weekend there's a five hour, f two full days of kirtan in different places in New Dam, There's a festival in uh, where else in, uh, what is that place? In Nishetra, Nishinga Shetra will be there for kirtan programs. You just absorb yourself in the holy name. Go to Japa retreats. Go to Japa, you know, kirtan retreats like that. Concentrate it on a little bit of, you know, and that breaks through this barrier of what we say being afflicted by distraction. You put yourself in the in the fire of the holy name, or the fire of the association of people who are fired up. <laughs> and we want to get fired up. We, want, we don't want to stay like a match. <laughs> we want to be like a fire. 
Okay, so this is another, this is a remedy for distraction. Any questions? Yes. In, um, on the appearance days of the Lord. Um, but there, there are so many services involved from, from 3 o'clock in the morning till next day, 3 o'clock in the morning. I Especially think this is, means just to attend those festivals, not to go there and do service. <laughs> 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 well, going, doing service is absolute, but in this case, it's talking about a particular remedy mm -hmm. of absorbing yourself in the activities of the festival, singing, dancing, uh, hearing Krishna Kata, speaking Krishna Kata. But does this, uh, does this mean that when somebody is doing the service all day, is this counted as um, service meditation? is absolute, <clears throat> but you have to understand that when it comes to our practice, we have to develop a taste for chanting. If we don't develop a taste for chanting, we're not going to be able to progress really in our Krishna consciousness. So these are remedies in order to develop a taste, but service is on the absolute platform. Yeah. So, if you are absorbed in service throughout the day, that is as good as, you know, chanting the holy names. But still, chanting the holy names have to be there. <laughs> so, it's absolute. Prabhupada used to say, I, I, I am dicta I'm doing my dictaphones, I, I'm doing my translation, this is chanting. <laughs> In other words, everything you do is actually an extension of a glorification of the Holy Name. But still, we have to practice the actual process, too, of chanting the Holy Name. It's because in my experience, when uh, the festival days are coming and being a Pujari, um, my mind, when I'm chanting, my mind is on... The service. The service, yes. Mm -hmm. So you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a problem. <laughs> but if you're having trouble with your japa, this is the remedy. Okay. Okay? That's what it's saying. If you're not having trouble and you're just going to the festivals, that's nice. You can do seva and not do seva. <coughs> do seva of hearing and chanting. That's seva also. Okay, thank you. Yes, next slide. Okay. Someone read. One must diligently complete the prescribed number of holy names according to his vow. And he must always check that he chants his round sincerely. Those who chant this Distract, distractedly are always eager to somehow complete the fixed number of holy names and be done with it. Mm. It is important to concentrate on the quality of the chanting and not on trying to artificially increase the number of holy names. Mm. The name of the Lord should be pronounced distinctly. Only by the grace of the Lord can this be achieved. Thus, one should pray to the Lord that he never falls victim to the Wiles. Wiles of the illusion of distraction and that he can continue to taste the full nectar of the holy name. So this is also about prayer. But one should count. This is again about the importance of keeping count. And complete. And I think we spoke about this last night, race against the clock. What I do, maybe this might be helpful to you, when I have a certain amount of time, and I have more rounds than I can fit within that time, I'm not going to try to squeeze a couple extra ones by trying to race against the clock. Try to do whatever time nicely. Okay, I have an hour. I'm going to give an hour, but I'm not going to be trying to get a number in. I'm going to try to do them nicely. So it's a certain mindset. If I have more time, then 
All I do is then I just chant until my rounds are completed. And I can continue to chant. So you have to sometimes create blocks of time in our in their chanting. We don't recommend you do like, all right, I did eight rounds, now I have five minutes, I'll do number nine. And then I have another seven minutes, I'll do number ten. One round here, one round here, one round here. Not like that. Sometimes we do that. But it's, it's just squeezing it in. Find blocks of time and make those times your chanting time. That's like this morning, we were a little rushed on time. So I had so much time and I had other things to do. So I said, all right, I'm going to have to surrender to the fact that I can't get as many rounds as I normally get done before I begin my day act. So I had to surrender to that. The other option was, you know, try to squeeze one or two more in there somewhere and make myself feel good that I did more than it. But it's, you squeeze it in and you squeeze Krishna out. <laughs> or he can't actually fit in there, and so he doesn't come in <laughs> because it's, it's too tight. <laughs> So, he's not being squeezed out, he's just not getting in, that's all. <laughs> so, yeah, do it nicely. And you know, there's a kind of a satisfaction that comes in the mind when you chant nicely. And you feel, although I didn't do so many, but I feel like I've connected nicely with the Holy Name. You can experience that. So don't race the clock. <laughs> but. Plan your day. So, like on these festival days, you know, you might say there'll be much, not much time for japa. So you have to see where there is some time periods, and then use those time periods for chanting. Pre-planning. Okay, that's practical. Okay, next one. The devotee should make a regular practice to spend a little time alone in a quiet place and concentrate deeply on the holy name. He should utter and hear the name distinctly. It is impossible for the jiva to singly, single-handedly overcome and avoid the illusion of distraction. By the mercy of the Lord, however, this is accomplished with ease. Therefore, it is essential to fervently beg for the Lord's grace with great humility. This is the jiva's only means of salvation. So you can't, you can't chant attentively. You have to beg for that mercy. And there's a prayer. And I think tonight I'm supposed to give the evening class, and we're going to talk about how to access the mercy through various types of prayers. So we'll speak about that tonight. Prayers before japa, prayers during japa, like that. So, mm -hmm. Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, you can't do it, you have to beg for the Lord's mercy. Mm -hmm. Krishna wants to see how eager you are. Any comments on that? Questions? Yes, Anuradha. Hmm? About the planning, about um, bla, um, Pl planning, your, planning japa. your japa, because when you see your mothers in Krishna consciousness, you see a mothers, a mothers, um, they they have many things to do. I mean, it's a lot of responsibility. It's yeah. children going to the school, uh, making um, um, lunch for children. I mean, making prasadam for whole family, making plan how to to make um, whole family like be Krishna conscious. Yeah, they say a mother's duty is never done. Mother's mm -hmm. work is never done. A woman's work is never done. That's the actual statement. Mm -hmm. Men are lazy. <laughs> they do what they want. The women do what they have to do, men do what they want. <laughs> it's, it's, 
you know, certain nature of the genders. <laughs> Women have responsibilities, and their main responsibility is to get the men to do something. <laughs> Really, that's not a... <laughs> Think about that one. That's, that's a very important meditation. <laughs> so yeah, it's difficult for a woman who's married with children and may also have other responsibilities. But still, I think certain solutions are that maybe some of these ladies can get together as a group and support each other. That would be one thing. Good point. Yeah, because I was connecting with association with advanced devotees that we, when we chant together and someone really have a nice round, like we said that advanced devotee, he chant inside you can feel it that it's absorbed in holy name so we can like support each other with uh, chanting together right. in a group yeah that's nice that could be propagated speak about that more when you get a chance actually try to institute that have little group sessions and then that's that just the support alone makes the holy name more available okay how are we doing on, on how many more slides? Five or six. Let's just go through them fast. It's already 10 o'clock. So. so, yeah. Results of applying remedies of Vixatia. Someone want to say this one? These festivals will gradually rekindle the dying spark of spiritual taste. Okay. Now what happens, the result is? Thus, he will gradually again become attracted to the pastimes of the Supreme Lord. Tasting the superior flavor of pure spirituality, he'll naturally be disgusted by his inferior material attachments. He'll be in Entrapped. Enraptured. Enraptured. By the sweet songs about the Supreme Lord's sung by the devotees, and his ears will fill up with nectar. His mind will become dislodged from matter and fixed in the pastimes and holy names of the Lord. When his mind is once again settled upon the holy name, he can chant eternally in a joyous and joyous, peaceful, joyous peaceful. and peaceful mood. So here's the results. So Bhakti Vinoda Kaur is explaining by following the principles of of the remedies. These are the results. So it, it's actually one thing follows another. These are not just eulogies to inspire us, but they're actually the results of following the process properly. <laughs> okay, next slide. Step by step, st by special stroke of good fortune, a jiva develops enough faith to take shelter of the holy name. By regularly chanting a fixed number of holy names with special care and attention, that person gradually progresses towards Anuraga, or spontaneous attraction for the holy name. Next. This is a famous verse. This is spoken by Srila Rupa Goswami. Someone read the translation. I do not know how much nectar two syllables Krishna had produced. When the holy name of Krishna is chanted, it appears to dance within the mouth. When then desire many, many mouths, we then desire many, many mouths. When that name enters the holes of, our, of the ears, we desire many millions of ears. And when the holy name dances in the courtyard of the heart, it conquers the activities of the mind. And therefore all the senses become inert. Lord Chaitanya, when he heard this verse composed, this was composed by Srila Rupa Goswami, 
he asked him again, what is that verse that you have composed? Please speak it again. Lord Chaitanya was so excited to hear this verse. So, yeah, we're getting a little understanding of what the great souls are experiencing. And it's also available for all of us. Okay, next one. like Krishna to be experiencing as a result of your chanting. When I chant, I want to leave Krishna feeling... Okay. Somebody, I want to, when I chant, I want to leave Krishna feeling happy. happy. Nice. Pleased. Happy. Pleased. Pleased. Uh, attracted. Most of us. Hmm? Satisfied. What else? I want to feel Krishna feeling that he's being loved by me. Okay. Okay, that's nice. Anything else? Hmm? He, wa he wants... To okay. You want to hear him to feel more protection towards you. Okay, that's nice. Want to come again. Nice. That's very nice. <laughs> Has a good experience, he comes again, yes. My desire to swap with you. Huh? My desire to swap with you. My desire to so, so. serve him. He want, huh. So you want him to feel that you have a sincere desire to serve him. Yeah, nice. Okay. Anything else? How about mm, the Krishna feels like I want the association of this person? Krishna's like that. He's very humble also. <laughs> He's very humble. Or how the one things you don't want him to feel is like uh, I want him to feel like now I need some more money and he should feel inclined to give it to me. <laughs> Something like that. Okay. Full manifestation. So these are the three. Darkness is Nama Parad. By giving up the fences, by trying to give up the offenses, the dawn of light starts to gradually seep through the clouds of darkness. And that is Nama Bas, the lessening of defenses, the clearing stage. And the light starts to create. And then beautifully, the car clouds start to part. The, be the beautiful sun rays of the holy name start to flood the entire atmosphere, soaking the devotee's mind and heart with, un -ex with ecstasy of love of God. He reaches the full stage of pure chanting and the full manifestation of the sun-like holy name becomes his uh, experience. Okay, next. Countering Napara. Pure lifestyle necessary for good japa. No one can give rapt attention who is not pure in mind. No one can be pure in mind who is not pure in action. No one can be pure in action who is not pure in eating, sleeping, fearing, and mating. But somehow or other, if someone hears with rapt attention from the right person at the very beginning, one can assuredly see Lord Sri Krishna in the persons in the in person in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. So these are preliminary necessities in order for good japa. Regulate your life, regulate your eating, regulate your sleeping, regulate your activities that are related to the body, and then uh, this will be a. a an asset, or a, uh, what we say, a, a support to achieve what we say, the association of Krishna. So we have to work on regulating our day-to-day -day activities. Okay, next slide. Someone read that. Counteracting Nama Aparad. Krishna is also very kind. 
If you chant seriously, without offense, even the mental condition at the time of death is disordered, Krishna will help you how to chant without any offense. The only qualification is that we must be very sincere. Even by symbolic chanting, by joking, if one can get the benefit, why not do it carefully? Why not do it carefully? What is the wrong there? Be serious and chant Hare Krishna very carefully in order to get success of life at the time of death. So Prabhupada is t teaching us to prepare ourselves for that time of death by practicing Krishna consciousness in a very sincere and serious way. Don't wait till later to become serious. <laughs> because they say, later never comes. It's always now. <laughs> you can't live in the later, you live in the now. So the idea is, what you do now impacts upon what happens later. So yeah, so be sincere, and then Krishna will do the rest. Even if you're not perfect, he will make up the difference. That's his mercy. He's very kind. There was one devotee, his name was Sudama. He was a sannyasi. He fell from his position of sannyas, and then later on left the movement and took up his old activities again. But he never forgot Prabhupada, never forgot the devotees. At one point he came down with a terminal disease. He went back to the association of devotees. And for a few weeks he was around devotees, hearing the chanting again, getting their association of devotees were taking care of him. At the time of death, everyone noticed it. His eyes got big. He looked in a certain direction. He said, Prabhupada, you've come. And then he left his body. He had done such wonderful service for Prabhupada, but somehow he fell away due to some bad association. But Prabhupada never forgot. Krishna's like that. He's very merciful. And that's not something that we do. That's something that is to show that even due to circumstances, if one never loses faith in the Lord, and the, then that, that'll be there. And Krishna will reciprocate. Yeah, there's, there's actually many stories like that. Uh, next one. Oh, no, that's, that's the, the next session. Okay, that concludes this particular session. Any concluding statements, comments, questions? Thank you very much. I'm sorry about going over time. I think there's, an, there's a uh, meeting with the initiates now. Take breakfast, and after breakfast, it's Harinam Sankirtan. So, so if you haven't been on Harinam Sankirtan in Ljubljana, it's an experience. There are thousands of people on the streets. It's a wonderful opportunity to spread the holy name. Okay. Thank you. Anasuya. Srila Prabhupada ki, Sri Haridam Sankirtan ki, Yatai Gauda Primananda. Mm.